teaching, te teaching writing. Um, I like my other version of Zoom better. Uh, I got to see if I can get that back. Um, teaching, teaching writing. Um, first, let's talk about some basic principles when you're teaching writing. Well, actually, let me say this first, teaching writing. Teaching writing is a thinking activity thinking activity um i always say to my my uh, my students that writing is not about grammar um it's not about word count um and it's not about making an activity painful for students. Writing is a, the pinnacle of an academic endeavor for a student. Writing should be used as an opportunity to get the students to synthesize, to get the students to evaluate, to get the students to analyze an experience that they had, you know, an experience that they had had, an experience that they have had. Writing should occur frequently in all classes. It should occur frequently in all classes, less frequently in some classes. Or let me say it like this, writing should occur in all classes, less frequently in all classes. For instance, even in physical education, PE, even in physical education, PE, uh, writing should occur. Now, obviously, it's not going to occur. Uh, obviously, it's not going to occur as often as it would occur in English class or social studies class. But students should write about their experience. Students should write about their experience in, in, in physical education. Why should writing occur in all classes? Well, writing should occur in all classes because it is truly a thinking activity. It is an exercise in thinking. It is truly an exercise in thinking. It allows the students to purge their, their emotions. It allows the teacher to learn a profile, to continuously understand how the student feels about what they have learned or what they're learning. It allows the teacher to become culturally aware, generationally aware. It allows the teacher to take the temperature of what the learning transactions are. Writing is, is very, 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 and I know you don't suppose to use the word very. That's a, you know, people don't like the word very, but I like very. It's very essential to the 
the learning transaction that takes place. It's very essential to students' perception. It's very essential to democracy in the classroom, if you will. And I think good classrooms have some sense of democracy. Even, even when there's no sense of democracy, good classrooms should have some sense and do have some sense of democracy. Because it allows you to reflect on your teaching. So one of the things that I would suggest you do is have students journal or have students write something that reflects on maybe a lesson that is essential, an experience that they have had in, your, in the class and even outside the class, experiences that they had in the school. Now, just like speaking, listening, and reading, you have to prepare your students to write. In fact, listening activities, speaking activities, and reading activities are a way to prepare students to write on writing activities, a way to prepare students to write. Especially, well, in all, in all learning situations, regardless of age, you must you must prepare students for writing by giving them inputs <coughs> by having by uh, by uh, investing time to make sure um, by investing time to make sure um, the students have had an opportunity to fully interact with what they're writing about. So if, if we go back and we talk about the lesson on planning, uh, passing, when we did listening, teaching listening, we wanna invest time in that and make sure that if I taught that listening class correctly, that would feed in to opportunities to write. If I taught the reading class correctly, that feeds in for opportunities to write. If I taught the, the speaking class correctly, that feeds in for opportunities to write. So there are a couple of principle, basic principles. Um, there are a couple basic principles that um, sh you should focus on when you're teaching students how to write. One, you need to establish and develop context. That's number one. So write that down need to establish and develop context. Number two, you need to make sure the reader, the, the, the student, the learner <coughs> is, pers is personally involved. You need to make sure the learner is personally involved in what you have going in, in, in the in that context. Number three, you need to generate and share ideas, which would include talking about the new quicks, the, the quicks vocabulary they might use in their reading. 
to help them represent and display and present context. You, number four, you must get them to begin to write in class. They don't have to finish in class, but they should start in class. Number five, there should always be opportunities for students to collaborate about what they have written. Number six, we need to make sure that what they have written has gone through the writing process. So that what they have written has been reviewed and revised and has uh, been formatted properly. And number seven, you need to, we need to make sure as educators that what students write is published somewhere. And that's very easy to do nowadays with technology. But we need to make sure that whatever students write, it gets published. Whether on a website, a blog, in your classroom, we want, we want to showcase what the students have written. And this is an opportunity to even use real estate in the building, the school building's real estate. So let's, let's talk about developing context, establishing and developing context. When you establish and develop context, this is, this is the investment in time. This is when you model. This is when you get background information. This is when you, um, you're doing the speaking opportunities. You're doing the, the reading opportunities. You're doing the listening opportunities. You're investing in the writing. Don't, don't do what I'll, some teachers do, say, you know, just randomly assign writing opportunities. No, they need to be well planned within your academic plan. They need to be well established within your academic plan. All right? So we just don't randomly say, oh, I, I want you to write about this. No, it needs to be well planned. It, it needs to be something that you do in the, um, in your yearly plan. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna have students write these types of writing products. Personally involve the learner. Number two, this, this is where you, you need to know what is of interest to your learner and get them engaged. Before you ask them to write, get them to talk about it. Get them to pre-write about it. They don't like to speak. You know, some people don't like to share uh, orally. So get them to pre-write. Get them to, to share ideas. And if you want really good writing products, make sure the students are on their feet or you, you, have, you set your class up in a way where they're not just at their desk. When they're talking to one of each other, when you when they are, are are sharing ideas, they're doing this in a in a community that is um, that's not a nation state. You know, when the students sit in their desk, it's almost like they're in a nation state. You know, they're in an island of themselves. No, get them out of that their state and get them in a community setting, setting whether it's on the floor or or uh, circle cheers, but get them in a mood, mood where they can share, think, pair, share. 
they, they can open up and talk about what they're about to write about. That's very important. Try, you know, try your best not to do it from the desk. Okay, so allow them to talk to each other and take notes and, and, and question each other. And again, they can do that in a community setting. They can get, do that one-on-one. -on -one. You can use technology to do that. But again, if you're going to assign a, a writing activity, you have to invest the time. So don't make it up as you go along. It should be planned within your academic plan, within your semester plan. And it's not as simple as I'm going to get the students to write a paragraph. No, they need to be prepared. There's a lot of things that happen before they write that paragraph. Four, get students to write in class. Get them to begin to brain, brainstorm because some of us don't have a lot of time, especially when you're teaching upper grades. And uh, for some students, they just can't think in that, uh, they can't write in that, that, that class setting. So they may need the time to write at home. Or you might wanna provide opportunities if your school has a library where they can go to the library and, and write and you have assistance from the librarian to maintain the quietness. But get them to start writing in class, brainstorming, outlining in class, and they can ask you questions because they need your support. They definitely need your support. So try to teach writing or engage writing as you as the facilitator. So they know they can come to you for support. They can bounce out ideas off of you and they can bounce ideas off their peers. So get them right in class, get them the, get, give them a push start. Complete opportunities for collaboration. I, again, when they, when they uh, have written a product, let them share it with their peers. Do peer grading, peer revision. And make sure that you are very detailed and specific about what the peer, what the peers' actions are when they review. And that you just don't accept, oh, you did a good job. Okay. And, and I would say don't have the peers review for grammar. If the peer wants to do that, that's fine. But have the peers review for the creation of ideas, the depth of thought, for the uh, logic of thought. Number six, you put value in the, in the writing. Make sure you're following the writing process. Make sure you're following the writing process. Brainstorming, outlining, drafting, revision, editing. Remember, we revise for ideas. And just like speaking and reading and even uh, list, speaking, listening and reading, where we, we play the audio over, we read the passages over, we do the same thing for writing. They don't just turn in one writing product. They're gonna revise it. They're gonna follow the writing process. So as you can see, this can be very time consuming, but it's essential. Writing is essential to higher order thinking. And it's a great way for you to really promote student-centered learning and promote you as the facilitator not the core teacher or instructor instructing the lesson. You can't instruct writing. You have to facilitate it. You have to support it, assist it. 
and then publish for for writing you know again you have facebook you have blogs you have twitter you have your classroom or you should have your classroom this is one this is one main argument for teachers having their own classrooms you have the the hallway showcase students writing digitally physically right when students see their work in the classroom it becomes it becomes their classroom that's the best way to make a classroom owned by students is by displaying their work especially something that they have written uh, so hard about so hard on Also, we need to make sure that we're writing for a purpose. Right? Make sure that students understand that they're writing for a particular purpose. And that should be, again, that purpose should be already well thought out in your academic plan. Are they writing to persuade? Are they writing to explain? Are they writing to compare? Are you writing to analyze? So if you're if they're writing to compare, what you know, what models would you give them to develop that concept? How would you model that? The other the, the other point that is important to, is to make sure you give students samples, a sample uh, uh, writing a writing sample so they can look and judge, and even follow. Even follow. Okay. It's very very important that you give them a writing a writing sample. It's also extremely important that you give them a rubric so they know what the expectations are. Don't ever assign a writing activity without assigning a rubric, without giving them a rubric up front so they know they can begin to revise and edit their ideas. Okay. And again, this is, I can't say it enough. This is why this has to be writing activities have to be planned as a part of the semester plan and academic plan. So you can get all these things ready before the, before the actual lesson. You can have them prepared instead of saying, okay, I want you guys to write about a paragraph about this. But then you don't have a rubric. You haven't. You didn't think about opportunities for model. You didn't have a sample paragraph. You didn't think about opportunities where students can collaborate. You didn't think about how the students were going to publish their work. Okay. You didn't think about the context that you were going to use. You didn't think about vocabulary. Right. So don't go in half cop. When you when you're teaching writing, especially writing, but all the all of them, as you can know, as you as you can see, when you're talking about teaching, speaking, teaching, listening, teaching, writing, teaching, reading, you, you can't go in half cock. Also, this what this allows you to do is not overburden the students when it comes to writing. I just had, I just helped a, a young man two days ago at a writing project. And I was really surprised because the school is supposed to be a good school. But I question that now. I had a student write 4,000 word essay in one class. And the student was, the student said they got no support. 4,000 word essay or research paper rather, not even essay, but research paper 
what, junior in high school? Too much. It's too much. What, what academic value are you getting out of it? No rubric. No setting of context. No, it just sounds good. Oh, I had my students write a 4,000 word essay, research paper. And I had to put all these components in it. They had to do, no. Writing should be appropriate for the age and it should not be academic torture. What could be written in 4,000 words could easily be written in 1,000 words. In fact, in fact, that's what we want. We want students to write concisely and we want cohesion. Cohesion of thought and conciseness of thought. Being able to write succinctly, using the most appropriate words, having writing on a topic and staying on the topic, having an idea, writing for a purpose, organization, that, that your ideas are concise, straight to the point, you're not wasting people's time, and they are, uh, you have cohesion, all the ideas build on one another and you're not breaking unity. So when we, when we start to ask students to write these crazy amounts of, 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 of word, word count, we defeat their purpose and cohesion and coherence. So just remember that. Students don't have to write a million words in order to get the point. They can get the point in a reasonable amount of words. Also, it allows you to give them proper feedback. Because as they engage in the writing process, you need to be continuously giving feedback, both verbal and, and, and written. And it's easier now because we do have digital formats. They can, we do have technology like Google Docs, that can be a live doc where they can use Google Docs or even Microsoft Word can be live. So as you comment, they can see your comments in real time. We have that technology now. So there's no excuse in giving students feedback and we can do it quite efficiently. So the humdrum, oh, I got a great papers. Well, that's your fault. You should be. You should be giving papers, you should be giving feedback to students and you should have seen the paper so many times that the final grading of the paper should be a, a relatively easy and fun process because you've seen the progression of the paper. If you ask a student to write a paragraph and you haven't looked at the paragraph at least once or twice before they have written a paragraph for grade, then, then shame on you. Because if you would have done all these things we, we have just said, then you would, um, you would uh, uh, then grading that, that writing sample, that writing product would be pretty interesting because you would you'd be interested to see if there, any progress was made. So again, as I stated earlier, teaching writing is an activity of, of also learning profiling. You get to learn a lot about your students and how they think and what their attitudes or perceptions are about what's going on in their class and your teaching. And it allows you to adjust your teaching. Because it's not about what you teach, but it's about how you teach it. And the only way you're going to understand that is by, is by gauging, taking the temperature, learner profiling, students' attitudes and perceptions. Again, writing is a thinking process, not just a recording of ideas. What we want out of writing is students to think. We do this 
by asking good questions that are based on good instruction, personalized instruction. What do I mean by, by that? By building context, by getting students to talk to one another. Thinking, 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 and thinking through the process. Drafting, revision, drafting, revision, drafting, editing, editing. It goes on and on. So we teach writing as an activity in thinking that they just don't turn a paragraph in and it's for grade. No. We want them, we want to show them that ideas develop. That you, what you think today may not be what you think about it tomorrow. So we draft and we draft and we draft and we revise and we revise and we revise and we revise. And then when we get something that looks pretty decent that we feel comfortable with, then we edit. Remember, you revise for ideas, you edit for formatting and grammar and mechanics. That should be the last thing you learn about. Have the students get ideas on paper. That's why the writing process is very valuable. Also, I wanna say this too, because I noticed teachers do this. Don't use writing as an activity for as a punishment. Students off task and you wanna get them to write about something, That's don't do that. Writing is not a punishment. Reading is not a punishment. If the student's off task, you don't you use a non-academic uh, consequence. Don't use the value of academia, especially in things as important as reading and writing to further make students not like to read or write. We want them to enjoy reading and writing. Also remember that writing happens at the point of the pen. Most of us don't say, oh, I'm going to say this and then write it. No, writing happens at the point of the pen. It happens in real time. It's not a, a sequence activity. It's very spontaneous. We, we do the same thing in speaking. I'm doing the same thing now. It's very spontaneous. Even though I know what I want to say, what I actually say is I actually spontaneous say. And this is why writing is hard, is that we, that we have to fight, even speaking. We have to fight our, 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 our need to be spontaneous and write in a very focused way and speak in a very focused way. So writing is really about focusing on the process, not the end product. But if you make writing about grade, this is 20% of your grade. This is 5% of your grade. If you make it about grades, then the, what the student's going to do is want to get it over with. And I'm experiencing this right now with my dissertation. I, I know my dissertation is just a never ending task. It'll never be perfect. I've al I'm, already, I'm already content to understanding my dissertation will never be perfect. And I'm just going to revise and revise. And even if God willing, I become a doctor. I'm still going to revise my dissertation and revise my dissertation and revise it and turn it into journals and revise it and revise it. Because that's what researchers do. It's never perfect. It changes over time. John Hattie shows us this invisible learning. And it changes, especially in, in, in the social scientists. 
uh, in the social sciences. People change, ideas change, politics change, generations change, social constructs change. This is why you this is why you could be four years older, only four years older than your students and be completely different from them. They see you as the old person. You're only four years, five years older than them. Also, I would like to say, have fun when teaching writing. <clears throat> Don't make it <clears throat> this horrible experience. It's an integrated experience. It's integrated with speaking, listening, reading. Integrated. And make it that make it a, a, a fun journey. Get students to write often for fun. Whether it's one sentence. Okay, class, all right, we got two minutes left in the class. Anyway, just write one sentence in your journals about what you learned today. Remember, in your, in your journal, you should be writing about every class. Remember, hopefully we haven't forget, forgotten that. And, and that's very important. So you can go back and reflect. I get students all the time, Mr. Ray, I want my journal so I can, I can go back and see what I wrote about certain classes. It's very important to go back. Get your students to journal, especially if you're the English teacher and the social studies teacher. Get them to journal. But even in the, the PE teacher, the art teacher, the math teacher, Because student perception is what creates good student, is what creates success, academic success. Because the students are able to define their own success. And this is, this is very important in the learning economy that we're currently entering. All of the activities that we did in speaking and listening when we did the dictaglass, and remember all those activities, sequencing, all of these things from, will help students with writing. So see that, see that everything, understand that everything that you do instructionally engaging students on a particular topic and this is why it's important to teach on topics. So if you know that you're doing, you want students to write a narrative, the unit for that, the unit, there should be, a, that unit should be about something in the past. Things I remember might be a good title for that unit. Things I remember. I wish I could go back in time. So context is everything. So everything that you build in that, everything that you talk about in a year, unit will be talking about going back in time, explaining something that happened in the past. And ultimately for that unit, they're gonna write a narrative. So the grammar points that you're going to cover in that unit will be past tense. You can deal with the past tense and different variations of the past tense. And students can begin to understand that everything is the past. Even the present. All right. That's teaching writing. Any questions? Any questions? Hello, hello, hello. Sir, are we, uh, that's, thank you so very much, sir. You're well defined, thank you. 
uh, sir, we used to do many different activities to make the interest to make the writing interest. Okay, sir, what do you suggest? Any uh, any other interesting thing or activity as you used to do or you apply in your class for writing activities? So for, for for writing activities or yeah. preparing preparing them to write. Um, good question. So, so it, it's about them. Prepare. So everything that you did, the, the reading, the speaking, the listening, everything should everything you do should should be should be setting the stage for them the students to write on that particular topic. So for what you read, right? So that's why it's important to teach in context. All right. So everything that the student does is ultimately going to be an asset that they can use for a writing product, for a writing activity. So make sure that that uh, that you use what we call constructive alignment. Okay. Uh, well, maybe we get a chance, and maybe I'll go over constructive alignment when we meet in the week, week on the during the week. But everything that you use should be interrelated. To that unit. That's why we 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 teach in units. And sometimes the book doesn't your textbooks don't communicate it well. Some textbooks communicate it very well, and others don't. But you should be teaching in units. You should be teaching in units, right? Like again, things that happened in the past, or I remember when might be a good unit name for you know you're going to teach uh narratives so this is why planning academic planning is so important and not just stringing activities along as busy work but making sure all activities fit together because ultimately what i do is i try to fit the activities to fit the uh the writing the writing task that we want the students to engage in. So again, if it's a narrative, then, I, then everything is about the past. If it's uh, persuasive, then, then you know all the reading is gonna be about persuasion. I want a bike. I want a bike. I want a bike for Eid. Right? Or the, the or uh, um, you know uh, persuasion unit might be they're going to see it my way. I don't know, <laughs> you know that might be the name of the unit. They're going to see it my way. It's persuading people, and you write and they you read these series of short stories or poems or. You watch videos, listening activities about persuasion. You, 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 all the words in that unit are related to what? Persuasion. Why? Because when they write the writing product, they have all these inputs that you have given them for a week or two weeks or three weeks, depending on how big the unit, how, uh, how long the unit is in time. The duration of the unit, right? So everything that you're doing, every class is preparing the students for that writing, that writing activity, or that writing opportunity. Okay, so okay. You strategically backwards map. I think I mentioned backwards mapping before. Backwards map when you're planning your your unit, start with the writing activity that you want them to do. Write a paragraph, write an essay, write a sentence, whatever the case is, and then backwards map out. What do I need to do to, what inputs do I need to give the students in order for them to do it? What do I need to plan? What resources do I need to have? Do I need to have? I need to have a rubric. I need to have a sample, a sample, uh, a sample activity. I need to have a rubric. I need them to collaborate. I need to go over the writing process. So what tools do you need? What grammar points do you need to cover 
in that week or two weeks or three weeks or whatever it is? What reading selections are you going to go over? What listening activity, activities can you do? What speaking activities can you do? And again, this is why we can't rely on the textbook because sometimes the textbooks offer that for us and sometimes it, they, the textbook does not. You have to craft your own curriculum. Use the textbook as a resource. Look at your standards. If you're looking, if you're going through the Common Core standards or you're going through Cambridge standards, look at your standards. See what the standards say at the beginning of the year. You look at your standards. All right, these are the things I need to cover for third grade English. And then you look at all those things you need to cover for third grade English and you figure out where you're going to put it at in the lesson uh, in your academic year. I'm going to put this in the beginning in September. This will be October. So it all, so you can get as much as you can that makes sense into your um, academic year. So you have an academic plan. Okay. In my academic plan, all the standards, I've included all the standards and the standards and each standard fits in these less in these units. Semester one, semester two. In semester one, I have three units. Things from the past. I will make them what makes the world what makes the world round. I don't know. I'm just coming up with stuff. Okay. And then in each one of these units. I said, how many writing activities will I have? In this unit, I want to have one writing activity. In this unit, I'm going to have three. And then you backwards map out. What do I need to do? What resources do I need to have? What, what standards are aligned with these, these things? And that's why it's always important to have a copy of the standards there so you know that you're meeting the standard. Okay, standard 5.3.2 says... Uh, every student should write a sentence with it, uh, to be able to use a proper punctuation uh, to be able to analyze an idea. And that's how you build, that's how you build your academic plan. Use your standards to your, your advantage. You have the standards and just think big picture, backwards map out. And then for, Eng for us English and for us humanities folks, we can use the write, writing activity as the, as the, uh, that activity that gives us a great idea or students' perception and, and how much students have learned. And be prepared to challenge students. This is why you need to look at the work ongoing. Be prepared to challenge students about ideas on logic, ideas on uh, uh, a reason. Factual information. It, it's a good way to really get to know your students. It's a great way to be able to provide interventions for your students who may have some things going on, who, whether they be academically, psycho uh, psychologically, uh, medically, medically, you can learn because people say things in their writing that they doesn't that they, they that they will not say verbally. So, writing is very valuable. But I, I, I challenge you, ladies, you have to do it at the beginning of the school year. You cannot make it up. It has to be a part of the core syllabus has to be well thought out. So, I mean, technically I would be thinking about it now. Okay, what am I gonna write? What, uh, what I'm gonna have the students write about? And how am I I'm gonna backwards map that with the rest of the skills that they need to have? And if you don't know the skills they need to have, just look at the standards. Standards tell you, don't rely on just on that textbook. Remember, the textbooks, they're not the authority. Whoever wrote the standards are the authority. And you and I'm not saying the textbook is not good. Use the textbook to your advantage. But it's just a resource. 
and that you may have to find resources outside that textbook to get the student to increase their thinking ability. Any other questions? Any other questions? No, sir. Thank you. No, sir. Thank you. All of that stuff I said, and nobody has any questions? Huh? No one has any questions. All of that. I spoke for 50 minutes, and no one has any questions. Am I that good of a teacher or what did I do? I suck. That, that even means I'm that good or I suck. That was boring. You're a good teacher. <laughs> you guys are just saying. Do you have any question? What you've uh, shared to us, I uh, already applied that in, uh, in my class. Good. Good. The, the, the main thing is. I want you guys to really understand is, is, is to hope, hopefully you take those notes and you rewatch this video and just follow those steps. This is how you build a good lesson plan. When you build a good lesson plan by having, you can only build a good lesson plan by having, um, look, by knowing the big picture and knowing what you exactly want to do. Okay, writing is, is not an act, writing is the important, the most important academic activity that you can engage your students with. Sir, uh, how can I in, uh, like imbibe all the four skills in one lesson? Suppose I want to uh, give one lesson, the ministry people are giving, uh, coming. So I want to uh, show them listening, then reading, then finally, critical thinking question and by writing. Is it possible like I, that? I, I, for, in a 40 minute period, no. 50 minute period, no. it's not possible. Don't try to, sh because you got to get opportunities for them to process everything. Okay. You know, uh, now if you're testing them, that's a different thing. If, if, if it's a testing situation, okay. But really, in a, and if, if you really do it, doing it correctly i mean I, you can but think about it you have how many minutes is your class bird 45 minutes yeah, 45 minutes to sham to, to to try to cram speaking listening reading writing all in 45 minutes unless the only way i can say it you could do it is if it's the a a, a, a um a uh a, a, a reflection lesson where you've already done those things, now you're just reflecting back on what you have already done. Yes, yes, so absolutely. It's a reflection. So students have been introduced to all those concepts prior in the past, and prior, previously, and maybe this is the end of the unit, and you're just, you, you are just reminding them by giving them kind of like the uh, a potpourri of speaking, listening, uh, and but it it would it would have had to be the same prompts they have already did, and even then, and even then, it would be very difficult to do, in for a forty five minute fifty minute block of instruction. Um, the now, the one thing you could do is things like run and read. And, you know, run and read is a collaborative. We didn't get a chance to do it because obviously it's something that you would, we would do in a live course. 
But Run and Read is a collaborate is a collaborative opportunity where students at the run that the uh, have to run they have to read um, they have to do some writing some little small writing um, reading comprehension but um, but that's not a listening component to that. I mean, I guess you could do it, but it would again, it would only be an activity activity that is a um, that is a reflection activity, and the students would have already had went through various iterations of that of reading, writing, speaking, listening over time so they know the drill they know what to expect as kind of like a summary activity right so that would be a challenge for you to do but only as a summary activity um to summarize the unit after they have already done speaking reading listening you know i wouldn't i wouldn't try to cram all of those things in for new products. Okay. Okay. So. Am I am I am I clear on that? So my my, yes. my 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 answer is that you really shouldn't do that. Try to do that, but again, it could be done in a well crafted activity. If you can create a well crafted activity that challenges them to speak, read, listen, and write. Um, maybe some type of game you can come up with. You, you probably could do it, but again, it, it would have to be like some type of a communicative activity where the students are fully engaged. Or, um, I guess you could do it as a project based activity where you get the students together and they have to read, they have to uh, listen, speak, read, and write in some type of project activity so you can do it if you're doing some type of project based or problem based learning acti activity but again but again it would be it would be a higher order the students have would have already had all these inputs already now they're coming on their own you're not teaching at this point you're just facilitating you follow me but yes, you would sir. have already yes, you would have already set up that lesson and this activity would be an activity absolutely it's just students a reflection what i'm going to do is put up a paragraph a short paragraph out of the same excerpt and ask them to research on certain topics which are mentioned the vocabulary i'm going to mention and uh, after vocabulary extension again i would i, I would already they would have already known the vocabulary they would already be familiar with the text. They would already they would have already written on the topic, and this would just be coming together, kind of sharing what they have already done um, in regards. And you would have to again, you would have to create a project based learning type of uh, deal where they come together, collaborate. Uh, maybe one student is doing a speaking activity. And in, in within the project, one is doing reading, one's doing writing. You know, I, I don't know how it looked, but that would be the challenge that you would have to do. But as core teaching, I wouldn't do it. As core teaching, I wouldn't do it, no. Can I share okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, I remember uh, one time what I did back in the Philippines um, because I need to showcase listening, reading, speaking, and writing. The, the one thing I did is I grouped the, the kids in four groups. And you need to think of the activity that will enhance or that they will use or they will cater their listening skills, their speaking skills, their reading skills, and their writing skills. That is the only way I think that uh, you can put up these four skills in one. Uh, yeah, and again, again, it, it, it would already have to be something that you have already taught and they're already familiar with. And it's just a reflection summary activity. Because if, if you try to do it and you haven't already taught, you're, you're gonna look stupid in front of the 
evaluators. You're gonna look. It's, it's gonna be. And I'm I'm speaking from experience, actually. Okay, you, you're gonna. It's gonna look silly. So it, it is better if 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 you wanted to showcase our skills that. And 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 here's here's my thing. Let your classroom dictate those things. So when the evaluators when the evaluators come into your room, observers come into your room, your your room already represents speaking, reading, listening, uh, writing, speaking, listening, speaking, reading, and writing. It already represents it. So you have artifacts in your classroom, and then maybe the students can point to those artifacts and explain them for the observers. Um, so any other questions? Thank you, sir. Thank you, Ron. Any other questions? All right. Um, I think that's where it is because I, I have I have some things to do. I got to prepare for this camp. So I'm already 18 minutes behind. So let me get going. Um, I think I want to meet all of you guys on either uh, Monday, but probably not Monday, maybe Tuesday for another hour so we can go over um, noticing errors and I can give you the answers um, to the um, to the quiz. The, and when I give you the answers to the quiz, I will not report it. It will just be, you guys have to record the answers yourself, but it won't be a recording, okay? Um, but I wanna go over noticing errors, uh, review lesson planning for a couple minutes, and then, um, and then go over the answers to the, that final TSU exam. All right. Also remember that you have the 500 word essay due on cultures of thinking. Um, that's going to be due 30 days after the last class, which would be um, which would be probably this uh, this video, the uh, the meeting during the week that we'll do. Okay. All right. Let me get going, guys. If there's no other questions, Huda, do you have any questions? No, sir. Thank you. Layla, you have any questions? Thank you, sir. Well explained. Uh, Annie, you are asked questions. Catherine, you have any questions? Any questions, Catherine? Irene, you have any questions? No, sir. Thank you. All right. We will. Uh, I'll send you guys. A, we'll we'll confirm a time, probably Tuesday. I just need an, an, another hour or so, so we can just wrap it up, and um, and then we'll go from there. All right. We'll see you probably on Tuesday. Okay. Remember, join us Monday for the cultures of thinking. We're doing uh, this week. It's so opportunities and and remember, I got so much stuff going on, but I, I believe it's chapter seven and eight this week. Okay. All right. We'll see you. On, we'll see you on Monday, and we'll see you on probably on Tuesday. Okay. Thank you. Right. Have a good day. Thank you so much, sir. Okay. Thank you so much.